Good evening. Welcome to this uh, live stream. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jonathan. I'm part of the uh, Nordic Region ATC Operations Department. I'm uh, also a part of the team at Terminal 2 Solutions, who uh, are the guys who create IVAC2, the uh, next generation ATC software to be used on IVAO. Uh, and professionally, I'm training to be an air traffic controller, so uh, I know a thing or two about ATC as well. Tonight, I will be showing you uh, IVAC2. Specifically, I will be showing you the Nordic region uh, FIRs in IVAC2 to uh, let you see what those look like. Um, we'll start the stream by... Uh, just having a quick look at the different Nordic countries in uh, IVAC2, so you can get an idea of, of how they look visually. And then in uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, uh, I will connect uh, live as well as ATC uh, and Copenhagen Control in Denmark with IVAC2 to uh, give you a chance to actually experience what ATC uh, looks like in, uh, in IVAC2. I will be uh, explaining a lot along the way, explaining how IVAC works and yeah, how to use the, the software generally. Uh, I would also encourage anyone uh, who has any questions to post those in the uh, in the Twitch chat on the right side of your screen. I can see several of you have, uh, have found that already. Good evening to all. Um, before we get started, I would like to just say uh, a big thank you to the developers at Terminal 2 Solutions for spending thousands and thousands of, uh, of hours of their own time creating this uh, amazing piece of software. A big thank you also goes out to the data prep members who have spent a huge amount of time creating the local FIR definitions for IVAC2. Uh, there are uh, dozens of countries around the world already that have uh, very good local definitions that is that are ready for people to, to use and go and control with IVAC2. Tonight we will be looking at uh, five of those countries. Um, we will have a brief look at uh, Iceland, Finland, Norway, Sweden and finally Denmark where we will be providing some ATC. So uh, Let's get to it. As I said, if you have any questions, please do post them in Twitch and I will answer along the way. Um, it's worth noting I'm running on Windows, Windows 10, but uh, iMac 2 is platform independent. It works on Mac and it works on Linux and obviously on Windows as well. Uh, so everything you should, everything you see tonight should work across all platforms. Obviously, the the interface might look slightly different depending on your system, but uh, everything should be the same across different platforms. So uh, the first thing I'll do here is I'll open up iMac. This is what it looks like when you uh, when you start it up. And uh, let's just talk a bit about the launcher here, which is the window that comes up when you run IVAC2. Uh, you can see up in the top here, you just enter your name, your IVAO, VID and password. That's pretty straightforward. To the left here, you have a list of uh, all the FIR definitions available. Uh, this is uh, every FIR where, where data is available for you to connect and control. You'll notice the orange FIRs are the one that I have uh, currently downloaded. The white ones I do not have a local copy of, but that's very simple. You just click the FIR, click the load button, and it downloads automatically from the server, and you see that it turned orange as well. Once I click an FIR in the left side here, what you'll see on the right is I get a list of every ATC position available in that FIR. So now uh, I just randomly selected Budapest FIR. What you can see is 
I get some uh, tower approach uh, in Budapest, I get area control sectors, I get uh, towers for different local airports. And those are all predefined and, and there for you to control. Uh, if I just go ahead and uh, find Reykjavik FIR in uh, Iceland, we can have a quick look at that. Again, when I load the FIR here, you can see all the Iceland ATC positions are loaded in the right side here. What you can see um, down here below on the left, when I select a position up here on the left, you just have the call sign and the frequency of that position. And then on the right side, you have the sectors covered by that position. So. For instance, when I select Iceland Radio, you can see that, that ATC positions consist of the West sector and of the North sector. And this is all stuff that's been defined by, by the data prep teams in the, in the data running in the background. So all you have to do when you want to connect is just select an ATC position uh, and basically click go. Everything is predefined. Um, you can connect as an observer as well, obviously, that's pretty self-explanatory. You just click the observer button and, and type in uh, either uh, your observer name or your staff name if, if you're a staff member. Um, so let's just load up Iceland. Uh, as you can see, I've now selected the ACC sector, uh, Reykjavik sector east, and I just click the launch button here. And uh, the uh, the position is loaded. Here we go. So for those of you familiar with Iceland, you will see uh, the coastline of Iceland here. We have the Faroe Islands down here. And then with the blue lines, we have the outlines of the, uh, of the ACC sectors. Uh, all the buttons up here in the top uh, obviously do a lot of different things. We will get back to those uh, once I get to Copenhagen and we actually log on and, uh, and do some controlling. Right now I just want to, uh, to show you what, what Iceland looks like, just to, to give you a general idea. You'll notice as we zoom in that more stuff starts appearing. Once I zoom in past this level we have the TMA of uh, of Reykjavik and Keflavik appearing, and we have the extended center lines used for vectoring. Uh, if I zoom in even, even further on Keflavik, we get the ground map of the airport. You can see a very detailed map compared to IVAC-1, where we have the runways and taxiways all in different colors. Um, and you can turn on and off individual maps as well. To uh, to have uh, yeah different different data presented on your screen. For example, you can see here I can turn on all the navates, so all the VRs and NDBs, and uh, I can switch on the name as well the text for those. So we're not going to spend too long on uh, Iceland. I'm just going to close down uh, IVAC here again and then uh, load it up once more. And we're going to have a quick look at uh, Finland. FIR here. You'll see as I click Finland FIR, we get a list of positions available over here. Uh, presently, there are just these four positions available in Finland. We will be publishing more positions during the next couple of days for you to use. So uh, we can go ahead and, and load up Helsinki approach here see the call sign frequency down here and the sectors here and once we click launch everything is loaded now the finline FIR definition uh, visually is extremely realistic we've been lucky to have a real controller in Finland provide us with uh, a lot of pictures of the real system that we've been able to to compare with IVAC so we've been able to make it look very very much like the real thing so I think anyone know who knows uh, a bit of, of about the, uh, the real Finnish system will really appreciate that. Uh, what you see here is the approach sector of Helsinki. You'll notice that uh, 
the radar is zoomed in and centered on, on the right position. Uh, since I selected Helsinki approach, then it, it loads the approach area. If I had selected, for instance, Helsinki tower, then it would have loaded up like this, slightly more zoomed in. Uh, had I selected Helsinki ground, then it would have given me the ground radar like this. So whenever you load a position, everything is set up automatically. Everything is zoomed in and, and just to the right position. Uh, so yeah, this is this is the ground rate of Helsinki. How that looks, uh, as I said, this is this is basically how the real thing looks as well. What you'll notice up here in the left corner is I have a secondary uh, window, secondary radar display, which is slightly further zoomed out, and I can zoom in and out as well as I prefer, which just allows me to see traffic uh, a bit further away. Uh, obviously, right now we're not locked in, so we're not actually seeing any traffic, but. Um, what I can just show you here as well for Helsinki is is how the runway extended center lines uh, look. You'll notice that compared to IVAC-1, the center lines can actually look very different. Um, notice, for instance, that the one here for 2 to right is longer than the one for 2 to left. Uh, the one down here for 3-3 for three, three has these ticks, uh, these uh, distance markers on both sides of the line, whereas the, the ones up here only have on, on one side. And that's exactly how the real system looks, so that's why we've done it like that. Um, and we can we can turn on various different maps. Here are the RNAV arrivals for runway 04 left, or you can have the uh, uh, SID points for 2 to left, and there's all sorts of things you can, you can turn on and off here. So that's uh, that's Finland. Just have a quick look at here at, at Rovaniemi, which is uh, our famous uh, Christmas fly-in airport. Uh, in fact, during the Christmas fly-in last December, approach control at Rovaniemi was provided with IVAC-2 uh, by myself and, and Splendor. So uh, we were looking at this all evening, basically, and uh, it worked very well. Uh, we got a question here in Twitch. What about vectoring T's? Someone's asking uh, in regard to the center lines. Now, as I said, this is this is exactly how the center lines look in the real system. So that's also how we've decided to to show them in uh, in IVAC two. You don't you don't actually have these vectoring T's for specific vector patterns in the real system. So so we don't have those either. Uh, if the real system had those, then then those could easily be created. Uh, maybe maybe they have that in some countries. I'm not aware, but it's certainly possible to do. But but we don't have it in any of of our definitions. Uh, of course, you'll notice how how different Finland looks as well compared to Iceland. The colors are different. Everything's different. And uh, now we'll have a look at Norway next. And and once again, you will be surprised to see just how different everything looks considering that it is indeed the same the same piece of software we're actually running so i go and select norway fir click load i get the list of positions over here and uh, we can select an area control position norway control the oslo sectors down here you'll see that when loading this you'll be covering both oslo sector 2 3 and 5 and of course that's all predefined so we just go and click launch and wait for it to load and that is Norway uh, again as I said you can see everything looks completely different the colors are different the lines here are different um, for those of you who, who know Norway, you'll know that I'm now zooming into to Oslo. You'll notice as I zoom in, we get some additional airspace boundaries, extended center lines appearing. And uh, again, we have a lot of different maps here that we can turn on and off, depending on, uh, on what we need to see. Um, let's see if I can find Gardamon here. I was at the very beginning. Uh, you have the different RNAV points here. You can turn on the text if you want. Um, you can have a nice fill color for the TMA. 
Uh, again, this is all dif dis uh, designed to look like the real Norwegian HCC system. So this is this is how the real system looks. It's the same colors, it's the same types of lines. Uh, they have the same information available as, as is available right here. Uh, and of course, this is defined for, for all of Norway, so for every Norwegian airport. And you can see danger areas marked in red and, and so on and so forth. Um, again, if, if I were to zoom into Oslo here, we get the ground radar, uh, which again looks different uh, compared to the other countries because this is how the ground radar looks in the real system in Oslo. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at Sweden as well before we, we move on to Denmark. Now uh, Sweden and Denmark will look very similar because uh, Sweden and Denmark actually uses the same uh, ATM system. There are slight local differences but, but generally it's the same system. So you can see we have a lot more positions here available in Sweden right now. This, this will be adjusted as well, uh, just to make sure that, that every position that's available is, is completely finished and well-defined. So I'm just going to load up a random ACC sector here and we'll have a quick look. Uh, and I see someone asked in in Twitch whether there are keyboard shortcuts in IVAC 2. And I must apologize, I think my, my Twitch chat here is lagging behind a little bit. So if I don't see your questions, it's not, not because I'm ignoring you. It just simply hasn't loaded. Uh, but, but yes, there are keyboard shortcuts in IVAC 2 of various kinds. Uh, and that will all be available in, in the manual, of course. So we have Sweden here. This is uh, a Stockholm ACC sector marked here with with brighter color. You'll notice as I zoom in, we have some uh, some navigation fixes appearing. Uh, of course, as always, we can turn those on and off as we prefer. We can turn on the text if you want. I don't think anyone will want to control like this, but but you certainly can if you want to. I'm uh, just going to have a quick look here at at Stockholm. You'll notice a lot of lines here. Stockholm airspace is quite complex. And uh, if I find the right group up here, you can see I can turn on the the center lines here for uh, for Stockholm. And again, the center lines look completely different from what they look like in Finland, what they look like in Norway, because this is this is designed to look just like the real system. Uh, again, if we zoom in, we have we have the ground radar here of, of Stockholm. This is how it looks. So, uh, moving on, I'll go ahead and load up Copenhagen FIR now, Denmark, Copenhagen ACC. And uh, we'll have a quick look at some of the, the different buttons. Uh, I'll explain what the different things do and then... Uh, We'll just go ahead and, and connect, and I can uh, I can control for a bit, and you can see how that works. So now we're just loading up Copenhagen. Um, this is how it looks. Those of you familiar will will know this is the shape of Copenhagen FIR. Uh, just to give you a quick look at here, we can zoom into to Copenhagen. This is Copenhagen TMA here. Um, again, the, the extended center lines here will look completely different to the other countries. And uh, if we zoom in further, we can get the ground radar of Copenhagen as well, which is, which is quite colorful. This is, this is how it looks. I've personally had the pleasure of visiting the control tower in, in Copenhagen, and I can tell you this looks just like the real thing. So we uh, will just be going over the, the menu buttons up here, a few of those, before we actually connect, just to, to give you a general idea uh, of what they do, and just to give me a chance of, of actually talking to you instead of having to, to talk to traffic at the same time. Uh, first things first, the sign in button, that does exactly what you expect, so we will be using that in a couple of minutes. 
the maps menu I've already demonstrated that in some of the other countries but uh, the beautiful thing about IVAC 2 compared to IVAC 1 is you have a lot of different maps which can be turned on and off individually so in IVAC 1 in the top menu you could turn on uh, and off certain things. You could turn on and off airways, you could turn on and off runway center lines, uh, fixes, VORs, NDBs and so on. There were a few categories, 5, 10 maybe, that you could turn on and off uh, defined in the sector files. Uh, in IMAC 2 everything can be defined to, to be turned on and off individually. So this is all done by the by the data prep teams preparing the data for each FIR. Uh, you'll see in the maps menu in the top here we have the black buttons which are, are just different groups of maps. Uh, right now I'm in the group called CH which is the Copenhagen maps related to Copenhagen uh, airfield. We have an ACC group uh, which is related to the area control. Uh, you'll see if I turn off the individual area control sectors here uh, it looks like this. So maybe for a big event we have the, the ACC split up, um, perhaps you're just doing one or two sectors, perhaps you're doing the alpha sector, you'll just have the alpha map turned on and, and zoomed in like this. Um, again we have all the navigation points, these are divided in, in aerodrome points and in en route points, so if you're doing approach somewhere you probably want the aerodrome points on uh, and you can turn on the text as well. Uh, if you're doing ACC, you probably just want the the unroute points on. Uh, you'll notice they look slightly different. This, for instance, is is a VUR, whereas this is just an ANA fix. Um, we have obstacles as well, which is this icon here, and uh, and various other things. You can see we have all the military areas available as well. So. Uh, if danger area 301 was active I could turn on the map like that and it would be shown on the, on the radar display. Um, and the same thing here with, with various TRAs and TSAs that can be turned on and off individually. Uh, the two letter groups here are for individual airports, so BI for instance is for Billon Airport which is the one we have down here. You can see I can turn on and off the extended center lines for individual runways. Uh, in IVAC 1 what you did was you just turned on every center line so you had center lines for both ends uh, but obviously you'll usually only need extended center line for, for one end at the time so you can just turn that on. Uh, and all these airspace boundaries, the, the TMAs, the control zones and so on, you can turn those on and off individually for every single airport depending on, on which position you're doing. Uh, and of course if we zoom in we have we have the ground map of Bilan as well, uh, which can be turned off as well. I'm not sure why you would do that, but, but that's certainly possible. So that's the, that's the map menu up here. Uh, next we have the presets button. This is probably not something you're going to be uh, manually using so much, but uh, every time you load an ATC position like, like I was explaining when we were looking at uh, Finland, uh, a lot of stuff is loaded automatically. So the map is uh, zoomed in and centered on the right position and a lot of different maps are turned on and off depending on which position you're doing. So uh, for example, uh, again we have the groups up here and then the actual presets down here. If I were to load the approach preset for Copenhagen, once I click that button you'll see I'm instantly zooming into Copenhagen. Uh, the Copenhagen airspace has been marked and I got the extra radar window up here as well showing me the area uh, around Copenhagen. Uh, and if I were doing approach control at, at Allbor, uh, EKYT, I would just click that button. I'm instantly zoomed in there. I get the ground radar for that airport. I get the extra window up here. So the brilliant thing, the brilliant thing about these insets, uh, or presets rather, is that they are loaded automatically. So 
if I uh, go back to the IVAC launcher, uh, I'm not going to do that now, but if I were going to, back, go, to go back to the launcher and select uh, all bore approach, then it would automatically load this preset we're looking at here. So the radar would be zoomed in and centered at this airport, like what we're looking at now. Uh, so that means whenever you want to do ATC with IVAC 2, you basically just click, you load the position, uh, and then everything is, is set for you. You don't have to do any zooming or panning or turning on or off of maps or anything like that. Everything is set up. Basically, the only thing you have to do is you just go in, you select the active runway, so you get the extended center line, and that's it. You are ready to control. We have the inset button here, which uh, opens an extra radar display. You can have as many of these as you like. Uh, and that can be zoomed in and zoomed out as you like. Uh, what you can do as well is you can drag this to a secondary screen if you have different monitors. Uh, I, have a, I have a different monitor here on the left. You can't see that, but you can see I can just drag the window across here. And now I have it on my other monitor. So you can have maybe an ACC view on one screen, then you can have a zoomed in approach view on another screen uh, if, if that's what you wish to do. Uh, I'll just have a quick look here through the buttons, see if there's anything else we need to cover. You can go full screen as well. Uh, that's another major improvement over IWAC 1. You can just go full screen and hide all the all the start menus and so on, so you can really focus completely on your controlling. Uh, I'll just be leaving that off for now. Uh, yeah, we have a clock, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is very nice to have directly in the ATC client. What you see here as well, we have different buttons. If I click the two minute button, I'll just get a, a countdown timer like counting down from two minutes uh, that I can just reset or one minute or three minutes. This is extremely useful if doing area control, if doing tower, and you have to time your departure separation uh, depending on, on wake turbulence and so on. Uh, you very often need a timer to just make sure you have exactly two minutes or one minute or or even three minutes between aircraft. Um, Velo here is the uh, the prediction lines on tracks that you can adjust. Uh, we will have a look at that once we actually lock on. Um, we have various lists here. Uh, one thing here, the BRT stands for brightness. You'll see a window opens that looks like this. What you can do here is you can actually adjust the brightness of individual map elements. So if, if for some reason something is too bright for you or, or, or too dark for you to not to, to be able to see properly, you can you can adjust that here. And you can see I can in fact just turn the brightness on the airspace borders all the way down if I want. They, they go completely black or I can turn it all the way up to make them very bright white. Uh, normally you want to leave it in the middle because it's predefined, uh, as I've explained, to look like the real thing. But but you have the option to to adjust uh, all these things. Uh, this is the ATIS window. We are going to set up an ATIS in just a little bit when uh, when we log on. We'll get back to that. Uh, metas. I can't load metas uh, when I'm not online, but. Here yeah, you can just have metas of, of different airports. We'll get back to that as well. Uh, we can have a quick look at the ACC info window. Uh, now, what this is, is basically an information system for use by, by controllers for various things. Uh, and again, this is defined on, the, on a local level. This is how the Danish system looks, uh, designed to look like the, the real uh, Danish thing, of course. So this will vary depending on, on which country you're controlling in. And you can see here for the Danish version, we have uh, some emergency checklists, for instance. We might have an engine failure. We click that button and we have a, we have a checklist on what to do if you have an engine failure. Uh, we can look up an aircraft type or get some performance if, if I have an Airbus 320 and I don't know how, how that performs. I can just type in the ICAO code there, get performance data, and then we have information about the Airbus 320. We have information about speeds and rates of climb and 
typical cruising levels and so on. So that's all very useful information where you online and controlling. Uh, the nav warning button gives you information on uh, on active military areas uh, in Denmark right now. So again, if you if you open your map window here and go into the military areas, we can see today Romeo 18 is active. We might want to turn on the map for for Romeo 18, and then you'll see Romeo 18 uh, showing up here on on the radar map. Uh, you also have access to NOTAMs directly in this window. If you click this button, I have all the NOTAMs active in Denmark right now, um, which is very useful, of, of course, as well when controlling. Uh, here you have the different aircraft labels, just a, a, a view of how they look. We will get back to this when, when actually controlling. And finally, you have the squawk code generator. Uh, now in later versions IVAC 2 will uh, automatically generate squawk codes. Uh, this is not the case yet. So what we're doing in, in the Nordic region is we're using this external uh, squawk code uh, generator and that's all in here as well so you can easily access it. Okay, I think we have had a look at uh, most of the stuff that makes sense to look at before we're actually online. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn off these military areas uh, so that those don't confuse me and then uh, I think we'll go ahead and, and connect and uh, do some controlling. So this is more or less how I want my, my radar to be set up. Uh, I just loaded the, the presets Copenhagen ACC and then the correct airspace is marked and so on. Uh, so I'm I'm ready to uh, to control. Uh, so by pressing the sign in button up here, you'll instantly see aircraft tracks starting to appear. If I load the text in window here, this is just the normal welcome message that you're used to when signing in to the. Uh, IVO network. Uh, the text in window is where where every inbound uh, text message will go. Uh, chat messages, uh, frequency messages and so on. And you can just click the message once. You see wh when it shows up it has one color. If you click the message once it goes gray just to remind yourself that, that you have taken care of that. If we go ahead and click the voice button here you'll see my frequency turn up and you'll notice that the uh, the uh, window is uh, green, which means that we are connected to to the voice server. Now with IVAC1, obviously you had to manually create a TeamSpeak channel and uh, set up everything. Uh, in IVAC2, this is all handled internally. Uh, you just sign in and, and everything is set up automatically. Uh, so this is green, that's good. I'll go ahead and close that window again. Now before we get started, we might just want to load a meta. You can see we have the meta here for Copenhagen. I might just want the meta for Bilon as well. We can have as many metas open as we want uh, and they'll be automatically updated uh, as well. So based on this I think for Copenhagen runway uh, 04 left will be active. I'll make sure to have that map on and for Bilon we will have runway 27 and that map is already on so that's very good. We can uh, go ahead and set up an ATIS as well here. So I want to set up an ATIS for Copenhagen Airport. This will be both an arrival and departure ATIS. You'll notice how the transition altitude and transition level is all filled out automatically. I don't have to do this manually. That's all calculated by IVAC. All I have to do is type in the type of approach, which will just be an ILS. Can have visual approach today as well. The weather is good, but the ATIS will just say ILS. I'll select the runway and I'll select the departure runway down here, uh, and then I just click save, and the ATIS will be will be sent off for pilots to receive. So. Um, 
can see I'm just sending a, a private message here to Sweden to let them know that we are ready to do some ATC. Obviously I'll just be uh, a bit busy handling some aircraft here as well, so you'll have to excuse me if if I don't uh, if I don't go on with explaining things right away. I'll just make sure we have everyone in our airspace well under control. What I'll do up here is I'll just set up a ground radar mode of Copenhagen. Uh, you'll notice by the way on the main window here that uh, aircraft on the ground are not shown. Copenhagen control. Uh, Scandinavian 601 at stand B9. Requesting clearance to jury. Scandinavian 601, cleared to Zurich, follow Nixon uh, 1 Echo departure, runway 04 right, and squawk 0471. Uh, Please second, uh, first part. Yeah, Scandinavian 601, cleared to Zurich via Nixon 1 Alpha departure, runway 04 right, squawk 0471. Clear to Zurich via next. Copenhagen Control, Transavia 1 and Papa with you, flight level 340 inbound, Dobell. Transavia 1 8 Papa, Copenhagen Control identified. So, as I was saying, I have a uh, Ground radar Copenhagen view up here now. Copenhagen. And we have Scandinavian 601 wishing to depart. I think he's Scandinavian just. Scandinavian 601. Clear to Zurich via Nexen 1 Alpha 04 right and Squawks 0471. Scandinavian 601, read back right. As I was saying, targets on the ground are not shown on the main radar here, they're just shown when you zoom into the ground radar, so you'll see Scandinavian 601 here, who's actually right here in the middle of Copenhagen. I can't see him on my radar because I just want to see him on my, my ground radar since he's on the ground. What you saw I did when I gave him the clearance was I actually uh, opened the, uh, the clearance window here, which allows you to send a data link clearance. You just uh, select the runway. The correct SID is automatically uh, selected by IVAC. You can type in the squawk. And then you can either send the data link clearance by text, or you can just click the voice button, uh, then transmit the clearance by voice, and then the SID and, and squawk and everything is set in the flight plan uh, of the aircraft. You'll see once I did that, the runway is now visible here in the ground label, and we have the SID visible here as well. Uh, Copenhagen Control, Scandinavian 601, 601, requesting push and start. Scandinavian 601, push back and start up approved, QNH 1018. Push back approved, QNH 1018. Someone was asking about keyboard commands earlier in IVAC 1. Uh, if you hovered a label and clicked F6, that would open the flight plan. Uh, and it does the exact same thing in IVAC 2. So when I hover Scandinavian 601 here, click F6, I get his entire flight plan up here. Or you can see the route, the departure and destination. And, and you can see down here the clear flight level 70, which is standard on the SID, has been set automatically. The SID has been set automatically. The squawk has been set, the departure runway has been set. So that was all by me just going into the uh, departure menu here, selecting the correct runway, typing in the, uh, the squawk and clicking the voice button and then everything is set correctly uh, here in the, in the flight plan.
Dermag uh, control, good evening. Uh, easy to one uh, Mike November at gate uh, one eight uh, in Copenhagen. Request IFR clearance for uh, final destination Bristol. Easy to one Mike November, clear to Bristol, out of runway zero for right. After departure, fly runway heading, climb to flight level seven zero, and squawk zero seven six three. I'm sorry, but uh, can you repeat, please? Sorry. EC2 on mic is cleared to Bristol, runway 04 right. When airborne, fly runway heading, climb to flight level 70, squawk 0763. Okay, for the final destination, Bristol out of runway 04 right. Uh, when, uh, when airborne, uh, runway heading and uh, climbing 7,000 7, feet and uh, in the box at 0763 for EC21 Mike November. EC21 Mike November, read back right. What we have down here with Rhino 1515 is a uh, pilot using text only. We'll just send him a, uh, a message here to contact me. You can see that sends a CPDLC message here, contact code main control, 121375. And then hopefully the pilot will just come to my frequency in a little bit so we can we can vector him. And he's going to Copenhagen, as you can see in the label. And uh, as we just determined, we're going to land on runway 04 left here. I will just have uh, the approach map online for Copenhagen here as well. That looks a bit nicer. You'll notice that the labels for aircraft Good on the ground evening. look completely different uh, as well from uh, the one in the request air. To, uh, what we have now is we have someone in uh, Bilon calling us. So I will just quickly, by using the presets menu here, open the ground radar of Bilon. Put that here and you can see Scandinavian 494 who just calls us is, uh, is right here on the ground in Bilon. So by going in and uh, selecting the departure runway, the clearance here is, is automatically generated, uh, ready for me to, to give to the aircraft. Scandinavian 494, cleared to Göteborg via Radis 3 Alpha departure, runway 27, squawk 6264. Cleared to Göteborg on the via Radis 3 Alpha, runway 27. And squawk 6264, Scandinavian 494. Scandinavian 494, read back right, push and start own discretion, QNH 1017, report ready for taxi. We'll go Scandinavian 494. Ryan you here sent us a text message. You Copenhagen can see turned control. orange. Scandinavian 601, okay. report taxi. We'll go ahead and reply to that. Level in 456, code main control identified. It's going to live in 601, taxi to holding point uh, Bravo 1, runway 04 right. And my taxiway Sulu and Bravo, cross runway 12. Uh, please say again. Scandinavian 601, taxi to holding point runway 04 right via Sulu and Bravo and cross runway 12. Tax to holding point zero for right via Zulu and Bravo crossing runway one two. Since Ryanair here is a text only pilot, when I want to issue a heading to him, I'll just click the heading here. A uh, good heading for him seems to be about 330. I'll select 330 and execute. 330 is set here in the label and what also happens is an automatic message is sent to the aircraft here, fly heading 330. So I don't have to type this manually, I just select the heading in the label and then that message is automatically sent because he's a text pilot. For the same thing I want to descend him here to 3000 feet, so I'm going to go into the clear flight level menu, I select 3000 feet, 
and just click enter. And as you can see, the text message is sent here to send to 3000 feet. Now, if we look down here, we have an aircraft here, Scanner Navy 1508, who is going to Copenhagen. He will be going into our airspace. So what we want to do is we want to set ourselves as the next ACC sector with this aircraft. You can see all the aircraft down here, all the labels are gray. Uh, gray means that the, these aircraft are not going to enter our airspace, so we don't have to worry about them. Uh, but since this guy is going to Copenhagen, we uh, are going to worry about him, he's going to enter our airspace. Uh, and because there's no ATC online down here in Germany, no one has, has set me as the next controller, so I just do that myself. The way I do that is I hover the label here and then I right click here in the field that says SI. You can see once I right click that, the label turns blue. And uh, and then the uh, aircraft is, uh, is, I can see it's going to enter my airspace. What you'll see up here as well, uh, in the sector inbound list, this is a list of all the aircraft that are going to my airspace. And uh, once I set this guy uh, as going to watch my airspace, then I have him in the list here. Uh, I'll just close that again because my screen is, is getting slightly crowded here. Again, I'm, I'm just trying to keep everything on this single screen so you guys can see it. Um, I, I do have two monitors, so obviously if, if I were controlling without streaming, I would move stuff to the other, other monitor as well just to spread it out a bit. Um, we have another aircraft here, Alitalia, going to Oslo, he'll be crossing my airspace as well. We do the, the same thing, just right click the SI, and now the label is marked as, as going towards uh, my airspace. All while this is going on, we're monitoring Ryanair down here, who's being vectored into, uh, into zero far left in Copenhagen. I have the small approach radar view down here, so I don't have to zoom in and out all the time. And uh, of course up here we have Scanner Naven 601 who's taxiing out to zero far right for departure. We can just check uh, other ATC units online. You can see right now the only unit we have to care about is uh, Sweden Control, which is online over here. Uh, this list just shows the ATC units that are relevant to us. We can show all units. You, you'll see we have a lot more. We have a lot down in, in Brussels, they are streaming IMAC2 down there as well right now, so that's why, and there's a lot of various German and uh, and other positions online, but these scenes, these are not actually relevant to us, uh, these are not shown by default, only the, the important units are shown uh, that are important for us. For the extended center line here in Copenhagen, it's worth noting that there are two nautical miles between each of these dots. So, when vectoring for a, a 10-mile final, for instance, you want to you want to aim for the fifth dot. So this one here, essentially. So I think it's about time to give Ryanair here the inbound turn for the ILS. I click the heading field here, which is currently 330. That's the heading he's flying now, and then I just type in 010. Enter. Text message is automatically sent up here. Fly heading 010. And then uh, I go into the cleared flight level field, which is this one. This is where I put the cleared level. Uh, for this, I just click the CA button. CA means cleared approach. And you can see uh, text message sent, cleared approach. And, uh, and CA is visible in the label as well. So now he's cleared for the, for the ILS approach to 04 left. Now Scandinavian down here who's going to Copenhagen, it's about time for uh, for him to get in touch with me. And since there's no ATC sector down here to, to transfer him over, what I'll do is I'll just click the label, I'll click the next button, 
and this is where I can set the next unit as well. We will demonstrate that in a little bit, but uh, what I'll do now is I'll click the contact button. Contact, you'll see list contact and then my frequency. I just click that and then you can see up here in the text window an automatic message is sent um, for the pilot to, to go ahead and contact my frequency. On the other hand, Transavia here is leaving uh, the area, so uh, we will send him off. Transavia 18 Papa, leaving controlled airspace, radar service terminated, and you may leave the frequency. Good night. Carbon hanging control, scan on Avian 1508. Scan on Avian 1508, Code main control, identified, expect ILS approach, runway 04 left. Expecting ILS approach, runway 04 left, uh, scan on 1508. Transavia 18 Papa, Copenhagen. Seems we just have a bit of an unresponsive pilot here, we'll just send, try to send him a text message instead. Copenhagen control, scan on 494 is ready to for taxi. Scan on 494, Roger, taxi to holding point runway 27 via Bravo and Kilo, cross runway 27, report ready for departure. Runway 27 via Bravo and Kilo and cross runway is approved and we, we report ready for departure. Scan on 494. Now, since Transavia is leaving my airspace, I will of course release his label. And uh, you can see once I release the label, it uh, turns a different color as well. Uh, what you'll see with the different labels here now, Alitalia is going towards my airspace, Scandinavia is, is in my airspace and Transavia has left my airspace. What you'll see aside from the different colors is the labels actually contain different information depending on the state of the flight. So if we are Alitalia here, I have certain information available. For Transavia you'll see the fields are slightly uh, different uh, and control. for Scandinavia as well, a different line there. One, holding short. B1 at 04 right. Scanner 11601, runway 04 right, cleared for takeoff, wind is 0303, set 4 knots. 04 right, cleared for takeoff, Scanner 11601. And uh, Ryanair here, who's on final, it looks like he had a bit of trouble with uh, intercepting the ILS, but it seems like he's correct. Easy to one, uh, Mike November is ready for pollution start. So we will go ahead and clear him to land. I just going to the clear flight level field here, click the land button, LND, and you can see here a message is sent automatically with the wind and clear to land. So I don't have to type this manually. I just click the land button for text pilot and then that's sent automatically. EC2 on Mike November, taxi to holding point runway 04 right, via taxiway Sulu and Bravo, cross runway 12. Uh, okay, but I need a uh, clearance for push and start before. EC2 on Mike November, of course, you are cleared for push and start and the QNH 1018. Push and start approve QNH 1018, EC2 on Mike November, sorry. That just goes to show what happens when you uh, do a live stream and try to control at the same time. So obviously he was he was asking for push, he was not asking for taxi, but there you go. Um, now, since I was busy talking, we never got talking to Alitalia here, so I'll just do the same thing again. Click the call sign, click the next button, and then click the contact button here. A message is sent to him to, uh, to contact me, and then hopefully he'll show up uh, on the frequency shortly. What we can see here on our approach radar is Canon Avon 601 just getting airborne. Uh, the reason we can just see his uh, target here with no label most likely is uh, because the pilot has not switched on his transponder yet. So we're just getting a primary radar reply here, which is just a position we're not actually getting any any uh, additional information from him. So uh, hopefully he will just uh, go ahead and, and turn on his transponder shortly and then we'll get the entire label. One little cool thing that I can show here, we can have a look at Air Berlin. If I click him and uh, click the EXPLT button, extrapolate, 
We actually get his control. entire route here. 601, passing 2,000 feet. It's going to name it 601, right? Your squawk, Charlie. What you can see here is we actually have the entire route of Air Berlin all the way from his departure or Rome up in Oslo and all the way down to Dusseldorf. We have every point along his route uh, shown to us and we can do that for every single flight no matter if it's in our airspace or, or outside our airspace. We can show the the route here of the flight, uh, even the long ones here that basically go across the, the entire continent. So that's very useful as well, uh, especially as, as an area controller. So we've got Scandinavian 601 here now, uh, got his transponder turned on. That's Scandinavian 601 identified, climb to flight level 190. Climb to 190, Scandinavian 601. So I'll go ahead and just click the clear flight level, type in 190, press enter. And you can see flight level 190 is set here in the label. Now for Scanner Haven uh, 1508 here, we just want to set the uh, arrival runway for him. The way I do that is I click the assigned heading field here, which is normally where you type in uh, a waypoint or a heading. But if I right click that field, then uh, in fact, my memory must be uh, confusing me. See, this is what happens when you when you show a new piece of software here that you haven't used uh, awfully lot. Uh, in either case, if I am to double-click that field, I can certainly type in the standard arrival route uh, into Copenhagen, which will be the two blue one. Can anyone for today. ready up on the arriving? Scanner Naven 4904, wind 270 degrees, 4 knots, runway 27, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, uh, runway 27, Scanner Naven 4904. Scanner Naven 1508, descent to flight level 290, you cleared the Tutlu 1 Echo arrival for runway 04 lift. Sending flight level 290 and we'll expect a two low one echo uh, arrival for zero for left. Scan at one five zero. Now, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Alitalia he is very happy about contacting us. We will just send another message here. Just to just to see if he decides to show up. Uh, what I would like to show you in the Alitalia label, uh, but uh, in fact I can do that uh, anyway. I can just assume him here, since as you remember we have Sweden control online over here to our east. What we want to do for Alitalia is we want to set the next ATC unit to Sweden control. So what I do is I click the SI field here. Uh, I don't right click it, remember that sets me as the next unit. I just left click it. I get a menu here with all the open ATC stations, Sweden control is at the top. Click that and uh, click execute. And now you can see in the label it says Mike Mike, which is the, uh, the code for Sweden control. And now, um, now I know which unit is the next and for Sweden control if he's also using IVAC2, then this label will show up uh, in the right color for him. It'll show up in his sector inbound list uh, because he's the next unit. Scanner name 1508, descent to flight level 80. Descending flight level 80, scanner 1508. Scanner name 4904, identify, climb to flight level 120. Time flight for level 120. Scanner name 494 here is going towards Sweden, so we'll do the same thing. We'll click uh, SI and we will set Sweden control as the uh, next sector. And again, we have uh, Mike, Mike shown here. What you can do is if you click the display button up here and you click the next frequency, 
then you can actually show the frequency of the next ACC position directly in the label. So if you can't quite remember the, the frequency uh, this guy is going to, you can just show it in the label and then once you hand him off you have the frequency right there. Uh, personally I like to, to leave that off. Uh, I'm quite familiar with the different frequency used, but, but you can certainly have that on if you want. Now for Scandinavian 601 here, as we can see his label, his final requested level is flight level 350. So we'll go ahead and, and climb him up. Scandinavian 601, climb to flight level 350. Uh, 350, Scandinavian 601. You'll see when I open the clear flight level menu, his cruise level is right here at the top. So I can just click this button. His cruise level is automatically selected and then it's automatically set in the label. Uh, I see people are asking a bit about the ATIS in uh, in the Twitch chat. Now, because I'm an area controlled sector, the ATIS I set uh, is just a limited one. If I if I were online as tower or as approach, then the entire ATIS would be uh, would be visible to the pilots. Um, but uh, uh, as the network is right now, we can't have uh, airport specific ATISs. Uh, that will be, be possible in the future, it's not possible today. But the important thing uh, about setting up the ATIS as well is uh, by doing so I'm telling IVAC which runways are active at the specific airport. So IVAC uses that when generating the departure clearances uh, and so on. And. Uh, what I'm just getting to know now as well, as some of you have noticed, since the clock has passed nine, IVAC 2 has been uh, officially released here for, for everyone to go and have a play with. Uh, it's important to remember still that this is a beta version. There are stuff missing, there are bugs in it, uh, but uh, you can go ahead and, and uh, download and have a play with it now. Uh, of course, you're more than welcome to stay here in the stream as well, and just to to see a bit more, I'll try to just uh, explain some of the things I haven't gotten around to yet, uh, while hopefully also providing some somewhat decent ATC here. Scanner name in 494, climb to flight level 290. Climb to level 290, Scanner name in 5508, proceed right to Baslo, Bravo, Alpha, Sierra, Lima, Oscar. Proceed direct S low scan and A one five zero eight. And one five zero eight just to confirm that is Bravo, Alpha, Sierra, Lima, Oscar. Thank you. Baslo. Uh one five eight. Correct. You'll notice as the aircraft here left Bilon, I no longer needed the, the ground radar for Bilon, so I just closed that window uh, here. And then, uh, of course, if, if I happen to have traffic in a, any other airport, I can just open up a ground radar view for that airport. Now we turn 1508 here inbound to Baslo. What I can uh, do to show you is I can just go in and turn on the aerodrome fixes here. Turn on the text, and you'll notice Baslow is actually the point uh, right here on 10 miles final for 04 left, so he's just steering right towards the final approach and will be intercepting the ILS. You'll notice that these points only appear when you're zoomed in, so right now they only actually appear in my, in my approach radar. They don't appear in my ACC radar up here because they're not really relevant for, for ACC. Uh, I have been interacting with the labels quite a bit, and obviously when you're coming from IVAC 1, these labels look completely different from what you're used to, and there's a lot of different information, and many of these fields you can click, you can right-click, you can double-click, and that all does different things. Um, 
for example, if I right click the destination here, I get the entire route shown. You'll notice that even the, the SID is drawn. Um, there's, a, there's a text field here where you can type in remarks that are that are visible in the label to you and, and the other controllers in this. A whole, a whole bunch of different features for the labels here. Uh, if we just quickly go back to the ATC info window here I showed earlier, I talked briefly about the labels button here. And uh, we're doing ACC right now. If I click here, I get the ACC labels up. Uh, you can see they are sorted in, in the four different states that I briefly talked about. The default state is, is when they're gray. That's traffic that doesn't concern me. The concern state is when the labels are blue. That's traffic coming toward my airspace. Assumed are the black ones that are currently in my airspace and then released are the, are the brown ones that I've transferred on. What you can see here is you actually have a description of all the label fields and what you can do is you can just hover your mouse uh, over uh, over one of the labels and then you'll have a small pop-up window uh, describing what the label field uh, means and, and describing what happens if you click, if you right click, if you double click and so on. So if in doubt go ahead and open this window up click the labels and then, then all the information is available there for you to look at. Scanner name 1508, descent to 3000 feet to be leveled by Baslo, QNH 1018. Sending 3000 be leveled by Baslo, QNH 1018, scanner 1508. Now there is... Uh, okay, open again control, uh, can you uh, confirm high speed approach? It's going to name 1508, high speed approved, straight in for the ILS 04 lift. Straight in ILS, high speed approved, thank you, 1508. Let's just see, we did have some different buttons up here that we never got around to. Um, SL, that's the sector list, that's just a list of all the flights I've currently assumed. You can see the call sign here, the clear flight level, requested flight level, departure destination and so on. Uh, this is mainly an ACC thing, as an ACC unit you often have a sector list open. And what you'll see is I can actually turn on and off all the individual columns here, uh, depending on what I want to see. Um, we have the filter button here, which is useful if you're working in, in an airspace that's only a certain vertical block. For instance, I might want to not show any traffic about flight level 200. I'll just select 200 here, uh, enable the filter, and this, depending on the label definitions, uh, then you can see all the traffic about flight level 200 just disappears. Scanner lane 1508, on present heading, clear ILS runway 04 left, report established. On present heading, we'll report established. I'll let for left. Scan A1 fast right. So he's cleared for the approach. I click the clear approach button. And then just wait for him to call. Unfortunately, we still don't have any ATC online down here in Germany, so these two guys will just be sent off. Scan on A1601, leaving controlled airspace, radar server terminated. You may leave the frequency. Good night. Uh, thank you for service. And bye bye. And we'll just put his label in the release date. It turns brown, means it's no longer any any concern to us. Same thing for Ebelin here. Ebelin four five six, leaving controlled airspace and uh, radar service terminated. You may leave the frequency. You'll see a box here appeared around the call sign of scanner name 4904. That is uh, Sweden Control actually pointing out this traffic to us. 
So by clicking a, an aircraft and clicking the point button, you can see this box being drawn around and this is visible to all controllers. So if I were doing coordination with Sweden Control, uh, he might just point out an aircraft just to to uh, let me know that that's the aircraft he's talking about when doing coordination. Uh, so that's very very useful for for coordination. You can also mark a track. Same thing happens. A different color box appears, but this is only visible to you. This is not visible to to other controllers. So that's just for you. If you need to remember something about uh, a specific flight, then you can mark it like that just to 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 remember it for yourself. Uh, so as I do believe Sweden were, were just uh, testing this out to, to remind me to show it off to you, I'll just turn that off again. Now uh, we will be ending this stream within 5-10 minutes time. I'll go ahead and, s and send these two guys over to Sweden Control in a moment and make sure the uh, Scandinavian down here establishing on the ILS will get down safely and then uh, once we're done, we're done with that I, I think we'll call it a night. Um, it gives you all a, a chance to go and play with iVac2 as well uh, if you want. As I said uh, previously it should now be available for for public download, so uh, you can go and, and play with it. Uh, if we have any questions here the last few minutes, please go ahead and, and post those in Twitch now, and then I can just answer those before uh, before we leave. Uh, just going to have a look and see what landing uh, runway this guy might expect. It looks like runway 21 up in, in Gothenburg. Scandinavian 494, expect runway 21 when ready to send to flight level 130. Uh, expecting runway 21 at uh, Landvetter and uh, we are descending to flight level 130, Scandinavian 494. So, to the person pointing to a question above in the chat, I'm afraid I can't see that question. I have had some slight internet issues, so please, if you would Scan post your question again. Scanline 1508, going around, missed approach. Scanline 1508, roger, maintain 3000 feet, turn right, heading 180, vectors for new approach. Climbing 3000 and heading 180, scanning 1508. And 1508, uh, visual approach is also available, should you prefer. Right, Roger. Thank you. Someone's asking about speed vectors. That was the velo button I I promised getting back to. You can see right now we actually have two minute speed vectors on for the tracks. Uh, you can you can set that up as you want. I can turn on just one minute speed vectors. I can have uh, ten minute speed vectors if I want. So that's all that's all done up here. Uh, by default, speed vectors are only visible to the aircrafts you have assumed. But you can also, uh, you can see the ones down here that I'm no longer talking to, there are no speed vectors. If I click all, then we'll have speed vectors on those tracks as well. Um, and of course I can turn them off completely and, for, uh, for all tracks. And control would actually like to request a, a visual approach and we do not have the field in sight. Scanner 1508, right, you descend to 2000 feet, continue right turn heading 240. Descending 2000, right heading 240, scanner 1508. Just got to handle this uh, missed approach here as well. Uh, regarding radar range, we got a question here. How does uh, how do you know what the what the current radar range of your position is? The uh, the easy answer to that is you don't actually have to to worry about that. The radar range is all predefined in the data files. It's all done by the data prep teams. Uh, so you never have to adjust the range or anything manually. That's that's all done automatically. Um, so so you can be sure that whichever position you're opening, 
the range will, will always be sufficient uh, for you to see everything you need. Scanner name 1508, turn uh, right heading 060, report runway inside. Right heading 060, we'll report field inside. Regarding history points, someone's asking as well. Um, this is uh, defined on an FIR level, so uh, you'll notice yeah, how the history points look here. And if I were to load a different FIR, they might look different. That's all defined to, to look like the real thing as well. Um, that's I don't believe that's something you can adjust uh, manually as a controller. Uh, so that's all, all predefined in the FIR. Scanner A one five zero eight, uh, runway side. Scanner A one five zero eight, cleared straight and uh, visual approach, runway zero four left. Clear visual approach, runway zero four left. Scanner one five zero eight. As uh, so we claim for the visual approach, we just go into the cleared flight level. We click VA. That's short for visual approach. We can go ahead and remove the cleared heading. Now uh, this guy just needs his inbound clearance. Scanner name 4904, inbound uh, Jutteborg, runway 21, follow lobby 3 Sierra arrival. Descend now to flight level 9 or 0. Lobby 3 Sierra the arrival uh, and uh, flight level 9 or 0, scanner name 4904. And finally we will transfer him to Sweden control. Now you can only transfer someone if you set the correct next sector. So remember previously we clicked here, we chose Sweden as the next sector. Uh, that means I can now click him and I can click the transfer button. You can see on, on this guy down here, who doesn't have a next sector, I can't click the transfer button. Scanner name 1508, runway 04 left, clear to land, 0303 at 3 knots, long landing approved. Clear land, runway zero for left, low landing approved, uh, scan there, one five right, thanks. So it's always important to set the correct next sector. Uh, then I can click him, click transfer. You'll see his call sign changes color, that means the transfer has been initiated. Scan on AN4904, contact Sweden Control, 118 decimal 4, good night. One one eight four, scan on AN4904, bye bye. Again, I do apologize if I missed any questions. I have I have Twitch open here both on my main computer and on my laptop, and I'm actually getting uh, completely different uh, chat histories on the two computers. So uh, more likely than not, some of the questions have uh, have uh, disappeared for me. Uh, of course, you're more than welcome to to get into the forum to ask questions or to reach out to to Terminal Two Solutions uh, directly. Um, I'm sure uh, people will have a lot of different questions during the, the next couple of days. Um, again, someone's asking about range rings. Um, you can, on an FIR level, uh, have uh, range rings drawn. That's no problem. So if, if the real world radar system has range rings, then uh, I'm sure the data prep teams for that FIR will have drawn range rings. Uh, in Denmark, we, we don't have those uh, on the radar screen, so, so we don't have those in, in IMAC either, but it's certainly possible to do. Now, if we just have a look at Scandinavian uh, touching down here, you'll see shortly as he lands, he will disappear from our airborne radar here, and he will appear on the ground radar up here uh, instead. Um, You'll see on the ground radar we actually have two different colors of labels as well. We have blue for departing traffic and we have yellow for, for arriving traffic. Uh, and IVAC 2 calculates this automatically to determine if the aircraft is arriving or, or departing. So and that's just like, of course, in the real system as well. We have blue for departures and, and yellow for arrivals. And as you can see, he's now landed so so he appeared on the ground radar here and he's he's disappeared from the uh, from the airborne radar so we can go ahead and close that i don't think we'll have any more arrivals to to copenhagen right now
Scanner name 1508, taxi gate Bravo 5 via Alpha and Yankee, cross runway 12. Good night. Bravo 5 via Alpha and Yankee, thank you. So I think that uh, just about concludes the, uh, the little live stream here. Uh, we are running out of, of traffic anyway, so there's not uh, that much to talk about. I do hope uh, everyone uh, found it interesting. I hope uh, I was able to give you a brief introduction here to IVEC 2 and to the, the Nordic uh, FIRs. Um, obviously, this is completely different from using IVEC 1. There's a lot of stuff to get used to. But uh, I really recommend you to, to go ahead and and go and download IVAC2 and, and play around with it. Uh, as, I, as I've shown, it's completely straightforward to load it up. You just click the ATC position you want to load and, uh, and uh, everything is, is automatically set up for you. Um, the main thing I think you, you're going to want to focus on is interacting with the labels. That's quite different. But as I showed you with the ATC info window, uh, at least in Copenhagen, you can you can very easily see what all the different label fields uh, fields do and so on. And uh, seems like we have a happy customer here, 1508, saying uh, thank you. So thank you as well for for listening in. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, and of course, there'll be plenty of opportunity for everyone to ask question in the forum or or wherever during during the next couple of days. Uh, when, uh, when everyone will be using IVAC2 for the first time. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you, you will have a great uh, Friday night here and, uh, and I hope you'll enjoy IVAC2 as much as, as I know I am. Um, thank you very much.